Today we're going to be talking about MapReduce, which is kind of a programming paradigm for doing um, large-scale con computations across um, a computing cluster. Google originally came up with the whole MapReduce idea and um, yeah, that way of thinking about doing large-scale computations. Um, and then it got popularised through an open source implementation um, called Apache Hadoop. And then that was then quite popular um, in kind of processing these very large volumes of data. So we can do an example of a MapReduce computation. So the first thing with MapReduce is that your, the job you want to do has got to be able to be split down into a map stage and a reduce phase. So the map phase um, needs to be, you want to do the same computation across all your data items at the same time. And so you do that, all your data is distributed across the cluster, now stored on the different nodes, and each node does the computation on its own data. Um, and then the reduce stage would then take the results of the map phase, reduce it down into kind of a single value, and then send that back as the result to the computation. A classic example would be um, a word count. So say we've got a massive text file and we've got it in a distributed file system across a cluster. Um, that means that each node of the cluster will be doing the computation on its own data. And we want to count the number of occurrences of each word in that text file. So for simplicity's sake, we've got a file which first line is ABA and then ABC and then CD. And this would be distributed. So let's say ABA is on the first node, ABC is on the second node, and then CD on the last node. So the map stage would take this and it would put this into what's called a key value pair. So we're going to take each word as the key. So for each word within this, we'll map it so that the word's the key and then we put the number one next to it as the value. We go A1, B1, A1, A1, B1, C1, and then C1, D1. At the end of the map stage, which is here, we've got all the keys and values. What happens then is a shuffle phase, which the programmer doesn't need to know about. It just kind of happens in between. And that basically groups these on nodes based on the key, so that all data items with the same key are stored in the same node. We'll go to A111. And then on the second node, we'll have B11. And on the last node, we might have C11 and D1. And then the reduce phase is going to return a single value for each one of these keys. So it's about combining all of the values associated with that key into one single value. So for this, we want to count the number of occurrences of like the word A. And so we're going to reduce it down. And we're just going to use a plus operator to do that in the reduce function. So it then finally comes to A3, B2, C2, and D1. And if you imagine that we're doing this on huge, huge volumes of data, so over very, very large files, this kind of computation is a lot more efficient if you can distribute that. Because doing this map phase of saying, OK, this is one occurrence of the letter A, that's independent of anything else. And so you can split that across individual nodes. They can do that part of the computation individually. And then later on, we do the shuffle and reduce it all back to the single value. So are they physically moving data or just moving the computation, saying, right, you're responsible for that computation? Um, it moved, they'll be moving the data. This all happens in one node, this happens in one node, and then this bit would be in one node. Because you'd need to know the key and then all the values that are associated with it in order to, to do that computation. Because the other point about MapReduce is data locality, so doing the computation close to where the data is stored. So you want to minimise the amount you're moving data around. Because um, that obviously takes time. So you want to do, move data around the cluster as little as possible and do the computations close to where it's stored. So that is the end of the MapReduce process. Yeah, you've done the reduce, that's it. What you then do with that data is up to you. So in like a business use case, you could be using it to go over you know, millions of customer records and get some kind of statistics out of it. Um, you could then save that back to the distributed file system, which is probably what they'd want to do for later use. Uh, yeah, after that stage, it's up to your use case. Is this still used? Um, so it would still be used in some cases because this is very good for kind of doing it like a single batch job. You've got one computation you want to do over the data and get a single result out of it. Um, but then it's not a very flexible way of doing it. Um, so for example, you've got to be able to fit your computation into this map stage and this reduce space. And you've got to be working with key value pairs. Um, this is in the Apache Hadoop version. At any rate, it can be quite painful to put something into that framework or just too difficult to do. 
And then secondly, because this does basically get the data, do map, do the reduce, and then it just writes it back to disk. It's not very good at reusing that same data across multiple computations because you're constantly having to write stuff back to disk, reload it. Um, so it's not good for like iterative algorithms. Um, so a lot of data mining stuff, such as like k-means clustering, that would be going over the data again and again and again, which MapReduce is not very good for. Um, so then this, there are then more recent big data processing frameworks, such as Apache Spark, um, that are kind of designed to alleviate those issues. Having a massive file of text or anything and then having to move bits of it around, that feels like it's a bit clunky as well. Is that the case as well, do you think? Having the distributed file, you'd use a distributed file system, so a lot of this would be sorted out for you. Um, so, for example, the Hadoop distributed file system, you basically, if you have like a huge file that's like terabytes, then it kind of splits it up into chunks and puts single chunks on like individual nodes in your cluster. Then when you're doing the processing, kind of the point of these frameworks is that you don't have to think about it. So that bit's kind of hidden from the programmer. So for example, in MapReduce, the programmer doesn't have to worry too much about the shuffle phase. because That's done automatically. They just have to do the map and the reduce. You don't want to be moving data around is the point because that's taking up time. You want to be keeping everything local on a single node as much as possible. Trained for a long time. And uh, let's not let Steve off the hook. Right, there's Steve over here. High value of two, high value of one, whatever that means. The interesting thing about this is we're not performing a classification. Little endian systems. So that's why we call it endianness. It all traces back to 